Hello and welcome back to another Swole Osmo video. We're gonna take off the glasses today and let you guys know the facts. No nerdy stuff today. When I say no nerdy stuff, I mean this is incredibly simple and it'll really shut down the meta as it has every year. It is a legacy way to stop tight sets and if you've played Madden for many years, you probably know what I'm about to say. So I'm about to say it. You need to be in cover four drop. Now I do recommend actually turning your coaching adjustments to match. This is something that I quickly wanna go over. Zone coverage match when running drop shells. So if you're not in a match shell, I do recommend match regardless of what you're in. The zones play like they're psychic when you run match. So still put match on. I might make a separate video on the difference between match and default. I know match plays a little bit weirder, but when you're running match, of course. But if you're not running match, all it does is make the zones play better. It actually has no fault. And I genuinely recommend running it in all of your zone defenses. Even in man defense, if you're putting zones on the field, having your zone coverage set to match really does help. Now against the tight sets, I do recommend just curl flats at 10. It actually doesn't really matter. The way you're playing zone coverage, you're not utilizing curl flats too much and you'll see why in just a moment. I'm gonna go over tight offset because that's the most meta tight set in the game. I will also go over the common runs like 01 trap and why they're so good, but let's just get straight into it. So I'm gonna call the most common play that you'll see the best tight offset players running and that's bench. They'll practically run in stock. Now you're gonna call cover four drop contain out of the dollar three two six defense, which is in a bunch of playbooks. So it comes out like this, and what I recommend to do is baseline. So you can come out baseline, of course, in your coaching adjustments. It's really easy to do so. I'm sure if you've run dollar before, you get it, but I'll, it's pretty easy. You can just baseline when you come out in the play. Let's say you think they're running. So if they're running a lot, I don't recommend baselining because you want the corners really close if they do try to take a run outside. But in general, if they're passing, I do recommend baselining. And then I do also recommend pinching your D-line and crashing up. This allows you to get better run shoots. It plays the run on its own. And it also kind of cramps up the sheds to allow, or cramps up the defensive line to allow some pretty neat disengages. And it just pretty much just allowing you A gaps and B gaps here and there. The other thing I recommend is pulling down these two safeties for seams. So when they run, like PA shot seams, or just in general, they put a streak on, let's say, their tight end here. I'll just showcase this for reference. And they try to highball it. They can't because number one, your hook curl would be there, but you'd be using him, so maybe not covering him. But you'll actually see the inside quarter plays really, really well against the tight end there. So you would never be able to just highball a seam and get away with it. The next reason I love this defense so much is because you can also just run hard flats and not have to worry about corner routes. Because the biggest fault to hard flats is you're giving up deeper corner routes. Of course, it makes sense. However, in this defense, the baseline pressed quarters will play the corner route so well and down low that you're not actually worried about deep corners. They're also quite baity. When I say baity, I mean along the lines of it looks like it's about to be a deep cloud and you could throw it over them, but you're never actually able to throw it over these baseline quarters. Even when you run something like PA shot seams, especially when they run something like PA shot seams, which is supposed to get over the quarter, as long as you're running those match zones, like in your coaching adjustments, switching to match, you'll notice that it will still cover PA shot seams. So it looks like it's gonna play, it looks like you're gonna have room, and then you never actually have room, even if you have more space on the field. So baseline press cover four with hard flats is actually very simple, but it cages tight sets. So you bring down both quarters, that's super important because you will get eaten up in the seams, and you could pop, pop you can highly likely leave the hook curl on the field and you don't really need to worry about hard flats. Since you're shading down, the hook curl will play like down here and play hard flats early. You could also do something interesting like that because vert hooks are genuinely better or generally better than vert um, uh, hook curls because vert hooks will actually play down low and bait drags, allowing, when they, allowing you to pick them off when they throw it late. So there's that, you can run something like that. The only thing you're susceptible to when you do this defense is if you, your hard flat's coming from your linebacker, your linebacker doesn't get out very fast, so they could possibly just throw like a quick out route and your linebacker wouldn't even get there or have a chance to pick that off. That's why I do kind of focus on having the hard flats from the slot cornerbacks. 
Now, if they're on a hash, which they most often will be, I'm gonna show you another rendition of this defense that allows you to blitz a little bit more. And blitzing is really important against tight sets because it is a tight set and a lot of the windows that they have to throw in are really small, which allows you to increase their margin of error while also helping you get some picks on them, some really easy ones just from Zen and Heat. So you notice on the right side, especially in tight offset, the running back side, the corner routes don't go very deep. So you could actually get away with doing something like this and sending that slot cornerback and running a deep half instead of a quarter on the right side. So now what we have here is cover two on one side and cover four on the other. It's technically a cover six, but since it's drop, it's not a real cover six, it's not matching, which is still very effective. So now you're gonna be sending four people having both flats covered and having all deep corners covered. So if they do try to run something like bench once again, the everything is covered. So they might be able to throw that super late, but once again, it is the short side of the field. So it's difficult. And more importantly, by the time that corner route gets open, the, these dollar blitzes come in really fast. So you may not even have time to throw it. It's definitely something you mix in, but in general, baseline pressed cover four is the tight set killer. It's so difficult to pass. I played three different tight set players in my first three games of the MCS, and I believe they scored a total of 10 to 14 points in all three games. And all I was doing was pinching my defense and running this cover four shell, this cover six shell, and just running the simple cover four shell. Now, the other reason I pinch my defense, you, can, you don't have to or pinch your defensive line. It's not something you have to do on late downs. The reason I pinch them is actually for run D, and I know I mentioned that earlier, but I'm gonna showcase it now. So let's say they're running this 0-1 trap that's super meta because it killed the 3-3 loop and everyone just feels like they could run it every play on you. You don't want contains, by the way. If you do see this contains, you need to crash up again. So they are well, crashing up. Your defensive line is now pointing up. You get bl better blitzing when you're crashing up. And more importantly, the contains play terrible in run defense. It was a patch in Madden 22 that caused contains to just get bodied in run defense. So you never want those contains on the field, especially because a skate artist isn't in the game and you can't really escape the pocket in general. So you want those blitz angles up. So I'm just gonna run 0-1 trap here and showcase how you can easily shoot it. And it's almost like you don't need to shoot it because you're sending those three defensive linemen that are already pinched and they will just fly through against the trap. So you'll notice Khalil Mack just passes right through the guard that's supposed to pick him up and you're able to loop around and Joey Bosa just runs into the pulling guard and sheds him. That's why you have to run the pinch. If you don't run the pinch, you'll find you're gonna get gashed by 0-1 trap. Inside zone does a little bit of a better job and that's why I do recommend hovering on the running back side. You gotta bring these get down every time. You gotta get into the habit. Like I immediately bring the, bring the quarters down because they will throw seams on you. So as soon as you run inside zone, you could try to shoot it, but I do recommend like scraping to the other side. That's also a really effective way of stopping the inside zone. But let's say you don't expect the inside zone because you can't always say, oh, I think inside zone's coming and I'm gonna try to scrape to the other side. So if you don't expect it, you can try to shoot it. Sometimes that works out for you, but more often than not, the other guys are there because you're in cover four. And the best part about cover four that a lot of people don't really consider and they just go, oh, cover four is good run defense. I don't know why is because unlike cover three, both safeties are in run fits. You'll see that both safeties have an assigned gap. When you run cover three though, only one safety has an assigned gap. And you, when you run cover two, no safeties have an assigned gap. And it's actually the two outside corners that have an assigned gap. And they don't even have an assigned gap at once. They have an assigned gap depending on the, the way you run. So just a quick cover two thing. If I were to run left, only the left side corner would have a run shoot or a gap responsibility. If I were to run right, only the right side corner. Very simple that way. So cover four is great run D. It's great coverage D. It covers pretty much everything a tight player can throw at you. All the bombs are covered. The only thing that I would probably finish with, if they are scaring you and somehow you have a slow corner on this left side here on the wide side, and this is only when they're on the wide side, you can put them in a third. And when you're running that cover six defense, you can also put this guy in a third and run more of like a cover five, I guess you could call it. So it would look something along the lines of like this. Now, when you run a defense like this, the left side will cover. Thirds play corner routes really well. Not as great as quarters for short corner routes, but in general, deeper corner routes, are, it covers really well. 
Thirds also play the seams a little bit better. So this is another rendition of coverage you can run. But the main reason you'd run this is if someone's running PA shot seams specifically or in gun tight. The play is called PA Bucks Cross. Now PA Bucks Cross is really good because it works like the C-Road in that it can get over quarters to the wide side of the field if they precision pass it. So there's a lot of conditions they have to do, but you don't want to be giving a touchdown up at all. So don't be afraid to instead put an outside third on the right side as opposed to a quarter and maybe inside thirding this guy to protect yourself in the middle. You could also just leave the quarter and just run cover four and just switch the one guy on the wide side of the field to a third. You'll notice the deep zone just covers more space. He'll run back a little farther and you don't have to worry about something like PA shot seams or PA cross that's in the gun tight formation. It's just a quality of life thing. You don't have to worry about it genuinely, but it's something you can focus on. And that pretty much concludes the video. That's how you run gun tight or that's how you stop gun tight and defend gun tight. It's really easy to bag. It's really simple adjustments. It's you're forcing your opponent to have a really large margin of error when you run this defense because everything's so tight. It's a tight offense, but the cover four drop makes it even more difficult for them because they can't throw those bread and butter corner routes and that makes them have to throw hitches, curls and posts against a defense that's very difficult to, or a defense that makes it very difficult for them to throw that in general. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, hit the sub. I'll be posting a lot more tips. If you are struggling with anything, drop it in the comments. Chances are I have a solution or I'll say to you, I'm struggling too, but chances are I'll have a solution. You guys have a great day and thank you for watching.